All right, good evening. We're back here in overcast Butler, Pennsylvania for another night in the Prospect League as the Blue Sox will take on the Champion City Kings tonight to finish off a two-game set. I'm Jared Steele, joined by Kellen Gersky. Kellen, unfortunately, the Kings got the best of us again last night, 5-3 game, and um, tried to try to break the streak up here tonight. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Ch uh, Champion City seems to have uh, Butler's number uh, so far in this uh, young year. Um, and just, you know, as you said, Butler just looking to, to break that streak. Obviously, uh, it's interesting. Four wins against uh, West Virginia, and you play the Champion City team and haven't beat them yet. So just how, just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes teams have your number, but hopefully Butler can uh, pull one out tonight. Yeah, well, we have a late change on the mound for the Blue Sox tonight. Nolan Krivijansky was supposed to start but was scratched, and Josh LaPiana coming back on three days rest will – Take the ball for Butler here this evening. And, uh, well, yeah, whenever we're already thin on pitching, and when somebody scratches like or unable to go like that tonight, um, that just uh, makes it even tougher. And, unfortunately, you got to turn to a situation where you're going to have a guy going a little bit earlier than what he, what he would normally would. Yeah, on three days rest, he last pitched, you know, as you said, three days ago. And uh, it's got to be tough for, for Lapiana, but you gotta, you got to credit him going out there um, on short rest. I mean, he, he pitched a heck of a game the other day, um, went seven innings. And, I mean, obviously probably not expecting that out of him tonight uh, on three days rest. But a, a quality, you know, uh, we got a quality guy on the mound like Lapiana and uh, just trying to get as much as you can out of him tonight. Yeah, Blue Sox committed four and three while the Kings are three and four. The, B both chasing Chillicothe in the early part of the season. In the lineup for the Kings, Gage Taylor leads off, followed by Jay Copeland. Tanner Burns will bat third. Noah West is the cleanup hitter. Larry Chrysler will bat fifth. DJ Dillon sixth. Jet Swetland seventh. Jimmy McLaughlin eighth. And Devin Boffia will round out the order. And Lapion's first pitch was a strike. Second one a ball. First pitch tonight, 634. And it is... Just above 60 degrees here and cloudy. 1-1. One, one. Swing through. Got him uh, to really be fooled on that one. He looked like an off-speed pitch there. And Lapion is really, uh, today, going to have to be uh, effective. Going to have to throw a lot of strikes because, as we said, pitching on short rest, you don't want to get behind guys and throw more pitches than you have to. Here's the 1-2. He sw gets a swing through for strike three. That's a good way to start it for Lapion. Now his defense, he has Eric Bolton behind home plate. They got Christian Webb at first, Damian Magalone, Maglione at second, Brady Gulikowski at third, Tyler Benson at short, Tanner Murphy in left, Ben Crew in center, and Stefan Merkonja in right. First pitch to um, Jay Copeland is outside. And 1-0. Oh, Ooh, got another swing through. You're getting a lot of a lot of swing throughs here early. I mean yeah. It's only two batters, but that's <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of swings and misses, and, and Lapiana, he did that well the other night as well when when he pitched and, and pitched seven strong innings. There's another swing and a miss. Yeah, they're not. I mean, he's pulling them. They're gearing up for a fastball, and he's pulling a string on him. That's two times in a row he's got Copeland out in front, way out in front. And now one two. And he tried it again. This time Copeland makes weak contact, and it goes foul. Yeah, and, and now 1-2 uh, uh, in this count. Lapiana could do uh, <laughs> various different things. Uh, he's thrown that curveball, shown that he can throw it and throw it effectively, but you know, maybe expect a, a fastball in the inner half here. 1-2 bounces in. No, oh, yeah, he goes back to it again. He's thrown a lot of them early mm -hmm. on. Shakes off a couple. Now he gets the sign he likes and comes home. With a fastball that's lined, pass Gulikowski out in the left, the base hit. Murphy is going to get it in quickly and hold Copeland to a one-out single. Yeah, nice job out there by Tanner Murphy, cutting that ball off. Thought for a second uh, that Copeland would have an easy double, but uh, Murphy did a good job hustling to it and, and throwing a, having a good throw over there to Benson at short uh, to prevent that double. A good job there. So that brings in Tanner Burns. He did not play last night. Uh, Alabama Huntsville. And takes the ball. Uh, 
Now step off and a throw over. Christian Webb making his first start at first base tonight, and that's giving Ferguson a rest before the road trip. Although, at some point tonight, might see him pinch hit. Bun attempt, and he pulls it back, takes a called strike anyway. I think that was another uh, off-speed pitch, another breaking pitch, and, and LaPiana, I mean, I don't know if he's maybe thrown one or two fastballs tonight, but other than that, it's really, seems like it's been all off-speed. Uh, chopper to third. This could be two. Now Gulikowski bobbles it, so we only have one play. That's the first. They'll get the out there. Maybe rushing that one a little bit, thinking to, but able to recover and at least get one out. Yeah, and, and it looked like he, you're exactly right. It looked like he was thinking to, rushed it a little bit, and uh, tried to make the throw. Uh, he was thinking about the throw before he fielded it, although he did knock it down and uh, got the second out of the inning, which is a plus. All right, so here's West, the shortstop from Ohio State with a runner on second, fastball, misses outside. West was one for four last night, struck out twice, but he leads the Kings with a 360 batting average. 1-0, oh, oh, got him fooled again. Got a lot of movement on that pitch, just making guys commit way way sooner than they should be. <laughs> yeah, normally you don't, I mean, you normally don't see a, a guy starting a game off like this throwing that many uh, off-speed pitches, but maybe it's Lapiano's go-to being that he's, you know, short-rested. 1-1, one, one, he tries to give him a chase again, but pitch will float outside. It's a rarity. It's a 640, and we've already got the lights on here. That's how dark it is around the stadium. Pitch outside, but it does. There's not uh, any suspected precipitation, so we should be good in that front. It's just gonna look like a gray October night. Like we should be headed to the football game. <laughs> Three one, and the pitch. That's in there for a called strike. West gave up on that one a little early, I think. Yeah, I think, it, again, it was that off-speed, probably a curveball there, a breaking pitch, and, and West, as you said, just gave up too early and drops right on in there for a strike. And now uh, Lapiana's uh, got this count back to full. 3-2, runner on second. We'll stay put. Here's the pitch. It's outside ball four. Not the worst thing with the runner on second. You don't want to give in there and, you know, have him hit a, hit, you know, maybe a pitch you don't want to, throw and then end up making it one nothing. Better to go after the next guy, I think, and that next guy is Larry Chrysler, although he, he did homer here uh, last week. Yeah, he's hitting 280 so far this summer. Had a pair of hits last night and a run batted in. And he takes a strike here. Chrysler almost looked like he was stepping back yeah. as that pitch was coming in. Don't know if he verbally asked for time or not, but just kind of stepped back as soon as that pitch was thrown. It looked like a fastball down the middle. Yeah, he didn't get it. Whatever, <laughs> he didn't get the time if he called it. Fastball, ooh, nice block by Bolton. He got down early to make because he saw that thing was going to come barreling in and bounce in front of him. Keeps the runners at first and second. Now the 1-1. One, one. Oh, nice curveball again from Lapion. He's Whew, that thing is really working here early on. Yeah, it's been his go-to pitch, and uh, really he hasn't – It's it's been his strike pitch. I mean, that's the pitch he's thrown the, the most today. He really hasn't thrown that fastball much at all. One, two, goes with the fastball, and he got him to go around for strike three. Second strike out in the inning, and Lapiano will strand two here as we go to the bo bottom half of the first. We'll give you the Blue Sox batting order tonight, brought to you by the Butler Armco Credit Union. Leading off will be number 17, center fielder Ben Carew, followed by number two, the shortstop, Tyler Benson. In the three hole will be the third baseman, number 22, Brady, Brady Gulakowski. Cleanup hitter, the DH tonight, number seven, Ray Gonzalez. Number 24, the first baseman this evening, Christian Webb, will bat fifth. In the sixth spot will be the number 10, the left fielder, Tanner Murphy, catcher Eric Bolton, 
will bat seventh and wear number nine. Damian Magliune will bat eighth and play second, wearing number 21. And the nine hitter will be number three, the right fielder, Stefan Merconja. And they will face James Wright, uh, same guy they faced last week. Yeah, and I think Wright, um, from what I remember, pitched pretty well um, for, for Champion City against Butler. And uh, Butler getting a, another opportunity at him. Uh, obviously, uh, the first one didn't go the way they wanted to, so uh, trying to get it here in the second, the, the second go around. Yeah, he pitched five and two thirds. He did allow three runs, but had seven strikeouts to two walks and surrendered five hits, picking up the win in that 13-6 Champion City victory over Butler. That put the Blue Sox at 0 and 2, leaving for West Virginia. They came back. Of course, two and two, and then eventually four and two after uh, pulling a four-game sweep off over the weekend, and then Champion City went and lost to Springfield and Chillicothe before coming back here. So, if they are able to sweep here tonight, they would even a record at four and four, and same with Butler, they'd be four and four as well. But we're looking to change their fortunes against this team from just north of Dayton, Ohio, in Springfield. Our umpire tonight, Pat McConville, is behind home plate, and Mark Schmidt is on the bases. Defensively for the Kings tonight, Jet Swetland is at first, Jay Copeland at second, Tanner Burns at third, Noah West is shortstop, then we got Gage Taylor in left, Larry Chrysler in center, and... Jimmy McLaughlin in right. Here's Ben Crew. He's ready to go. He had a pair of hits last night from the leadoff spot, including a, a double in the sixth inning that put him on with nobody out, and unfortunately they couldn't get him in. He pops up the first pitch he sees here, and McLaughlin calls off both Copeland and Swetland and makes the catch for the out. Yeah, I thought for uh, a second it was going to be a, a Bermuda situation yeah. in, in between all three of the uh, the first baseman, second baseman, and right fielder. But a uh, good job out there by McLaughlin calling everybody off and um, going and getting that ball. Tyler Benson, 0 for 4 last night, hitting 280 on the summer. Tries a bunt, but will foul it straight back and smacks his bat down. Blue Sox in there, throwback Yankees. Uh, these are the Kellen uniforms. Yeah, they wear them every time I'm on here. They wear the Yankee uniform. Well, well popped out of the stadium. So right gets an out on one pitch and then a no two count uh, on the second batter. Yeah, and, and now uh, Benson's gonna have to put a good at bat together because you put yourself, you know, you you missed that first pitch, uh, the bunt, and now you're in a no two hole. Pitch way high. Wright goes to Benedictine University. He's a native of Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Pitch just misses, two and two. And here's the pitch. Benson strikes out. And there's two down in the first. Brady Gulikowski. Here's the pitch to him. He's behind the fastball. Right. Picking up right where he left off last week here. Lukowski behind the fastball again. They can't quite time right here early on. Yeah, and it seems, uh, yeah, as you said, right was picking up where he left off last week. Seven Ks in that game last week. Already got one to his credit so far. Lukowski takes a pitch. And here's the one, two. That's outside as well. Two, two popped up. That could be a stadium ball. 
is actually coming back into play. DJ Dillon almost had it go over his mid, but he makes the catch for the out in foul territory. It started, that ball started out four rows deep in the stadium and worked its way back in. Yeah, I definitely, definitely didn't think that they are going to have a chance to make a play on that. I didn't think D.J. Dillon was going to have a chance, but uh, somehow that ball comes on back, and Dillon makes a nice play. Well, we're going to go to the second here. It's scoreless in Butler. It's time for each and every one of us to face a very troubling fact. There exists a significant heroin and opioid epidemic in not only Butler County, but elsewhere across the country. I'm Rich Goldinger, the District Attorney of Butler County. This is my backyard and yours too. Together, we can work to eradicate the high-level drug dealers that supply these drugs to those using them. Heroin and opioid abuse does not discriminate. Users come from all economic backgrounds, are male and female, and may be teenagers or middle-aged adults. With your help and in conjunction with the Butler County Drug Task Force and the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, we can target those dealers who bring this poison into our county. Please report any suspicious activity to your local law enforcement agency, the Pennsylvania State Police, or to my office. This is our ballpark. This is our county. This is our backyard. Let's all say, not in my backyard. Please enjoy tonight's Blue Sox game. Top of the second, the six, seven, and eight hitters do up for Champion City. Scoreless so far. Rick White getting about to first base. He's a little late. <laughs> now three, the catcher, DJ, Dillon. DJ Dillon is leading it off here. He took a ball to start it. Now he didn't even react, asked for time, didn't get it. Instead, gets a strike. Which inside? I'll tell you, I, I'm pretty sure, Kellen, he was, yeah, he's doing it every pitch. He's, he's putting the, the hand up, and you see that from time to time, but uh, not in this league that often. And called strike. And and Dylan is kind of deliberate when he does it, too. Uh, that time, well, and I say that, and then he doesn't do yeah. it, but he had that hand out well before he even got in the box and didn't like the fact that he didn't get the, the time called first time. 2-2, two, two. just misses. A lot of late break on that pitch from LaPiana. And here's the payoff. Fouled off. Yeah, he's he's taking his time out here, stepping out of the box, getting back in. Deliberate. Three two, low for ball four, lead off walk. So Dylan is aboard. Now batting number thirty three, first baseman Jet Swetland. Brings in your favorite player, <laughs> Jet Swetland. Yeah, the best baseball name I've ever heard in my life, Jet Swetland. Here's. He's going to bunt. Oh, that's a good one. That is. Gulikowski fields it, fires the first, shouldn't have. And now he threw it away. And Dylan is going to be waved home. And this is, he went out into the Bermuda Triangle out there. Throw to third. The catcher's there to tag him out. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a catcher play at third base tag a guy out before. Yeah, that was, uh, well, I was going to say who's at home. But, I mean, Bolton left home and. Uh, for some reason, went to third base. It ends up working out. He gets the gets the tag out there. Uh, the pitcher uh, Lapiano was covering home there. Good job to do that. Um, but that's a weird play. You never see a you never see a catcher covering third base. So that's a single, and then an E five, and then he's retired. I don't know who threw the ball from over there. I couldn't tell you. It's behind this. It's it's. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> could have been somebody in a bullpen for all I know. It was just in there in the corner, out of our sight. But uh, what's even more amazing about the, that is the catcher was on the other side wait, waiting at third base to tag a guy out. And we'll just call it, a, I guess, a 9-2 yeah. put out, I guess. We'll give it to Mercadre. Yeah. <laughs> McLaughlin in a 2-2 two -two count here. One down. The Kings did score a run. They're winning one nothing on that error by Gulakowski. Swing and a miss here. Strikeout for McLaughlin. The, but the run seems so... Um, it's like the, it, it's burying the lead, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they did score, but but the, the way that thing went down at third base, that was a new one. Boffia, the DH, is up two down here. Takes the pitch for a ball. But if you're Gulikowski, you're going all the way back there, you probably should just put that in your back pocket. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And it, it was a pretty good punt by Swetland. I mean, he, he was right out of the box ready, and, I mean, you're not going to really get anybody with a punt like that. N no, he should have just let that one go. but Or not let it go, but... Not throwing it because yeah. it ends up being a run. They don't get a. They probably don't have a run on the board at this point, if it isn't for that error. Because the next guy struck out. You only have one out right now and two men on. But uh, you know, I don't know. That was just a, a decision. I'm sure he'd like to have back. One, two upcoming. Nope, nope. Time called first. These uh, these Kings like to call time. Yeah, I mean, it's a good strategy in trying to get the pitcher off his rhythm. And you never want to be, uh, you don't want to take too much time in the box if you're a hitter and have the pitcher freeze there or anything like that. Oh, pop up over top of her head. So that'll make it out of the stadium. For sure that one will make it out of the stadium. The one two, another foul ball. Mafia trying to up that count pitch count. We talked earlier about Lapiano being on three days rest. And he's trying to yeah, you know, he's trying to limit everything he can here. Yeah, here's the one two. Again, curveball. In there for a called strike three. Fourth K for Lapiana through two. Let the Kings get a run. On uh, one hit, one error, and no one left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the second with the Kings leading one nothing. Back here in Butler, bottom of the second. Kings leading one nothing. We were just talking off air. No, none of us, uh, the four that we're discussing, have ever seen a catcher hanging out at third base to tag a runner out. Yeah. See, as you said right before he came on, uh, catcher is taught never to leave home. You were yeah. a catcher. Yeah. You ever, you ever run over to third <laughs> base to cover? No, I don't think once in my life have I ever, <laughs> I've ever done that. Pitch outside to Ray Gonzalez. Yeah, so but the Kings got a run on an error by Gulikowski, and it's one nothing pitch misses away. 
Gonzalez is swung the bat pretty well to start the year. He had another double last night. And he's two for, he was two for four. And he's hitting 450 currently, which is in the top five of the league. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's that's not a bad day. Uh, two for four. And when it, ra when it raises your average, uh, well, actually, it didn't really probably raise it too much considering two for four and he's batting 250. Well, he's ahead three and one here. Christian Webb on deck. Gonzalez takes a called strike on a fastball. This this Ray is not a tall guy. He's probably, I would say, he's, I think he's listed at 5'10", but that's generous. And he, he can really fire it in there. 3-2, outside ball four. First base runner for Butler. It's a leadoff walk to begin the second by Gonzalez. Yeah, nice at bat there by Ray Gonzalez. Um, sure he would like those two strikes he took back and it looked like pretty good pitches, but uh, with such a quick inning that James Wright had in that first inning, uh, it was probably single digit pitches in the first inning. A good job there, um, a six pitch at bat uh, for Ray Gonzalez. Webb will take a called strike. Webb had a double last night too. And Blue Sox were able to put, put some extra bases together. They had four doubles yesterday, but were only able to plate three runs and two of them came on a home run by you know, by Ferguson. So they got guys in scoring position last night. They just could not get them in until it was too late. Right? They'll throw over to first. Gonzalez almost picked off. Swetland applied the tag just as he got his foot on the bag. It wasn't, uh, it almost looked like he just got caught flat-footed to Greg Gonzalez. I mean, it didn't look like he was going anywhere. He just, you know, kind of just got caught flat-footed. Little grounder foul. Yeah, he, you're right. He, it was almost like he just got caught surprised. Yeah. Because yeah, he had just stepped off yeah. the, the previous pitch, so, or the previous motion, I guess. He didn't even pitch. He just stepped off, and then he comes right back with a pickoff move. 0-2, just outside. Pitch upstairs. Um, Dylan thought about a snap, but decided to hold on. Two two swing and a miss. Strike three. Webb behind the fastball. One out. Yeah, and Wright has thrown that fastball well tonight. Uh, it's kind of. Uh, both pitchers are kind of working in opposite ways. Um, James Wright more relying on the fastball, and guys are behind it. Whereas Lapiana, he's kind of just throwing the off-speed pitch a lot, and it's just kind of it's it's kind of interesting tonight. Well, here is Murphy. He just gets a piece of that pitch to the screen. Murphy, one for four. He had the double last night. He has a triple to his credit earlier this year. Just played in a handful of games since coming last Friday. Swing and a miss. Fooled him with a hard curveball, but sharp late break. And, and Ray Gonzalez over there kind of bluffed the steal. Uh, didn't really do too much. Only probably got you know, a couple extra feet off the bag with the bluff steal, but and here's the 0-2, fastball way high. And Murphy, well behind the fastball, strikes out. And that's now three strikeouts for Murphy, or for Wright. Yeah, and the, the fastball is just working well for James Wright. I, yeah. I mean, guys are behind it. Murphy there, I'm pretty sure he was looking something off speed and just didn't get it. He, he got the fastball and 
as you said, I mean, he wasn't even close to that. Yeah, it was, he saw it way too late and it was over. He made an attempt, but the ball was almost in the glove already. Gonzalez takes off for second throw down, hit him, and now Gonzalez thought about j popping up and going to third, but Chrysler was on the spot out there in shallow center to make sure Gonzalez didn't even think about it. But a stolen base puts the runner in scoring position here for Bolton. He tried to, it looked like he was trying to protect there because that pitch was way low and inside, but he tried to get a piece yeah, of it. Yeah, it might have been a hit and run there. We've seen uh, the Blue Sox do that a couple times uh, this year. Um, there's a big gap there the, the, on the right side. Bolton was probably trying to slap it that way, but as you said, if not, just trying to protect his guy, and he did so. Pitch. In there for a called strike, going two to Bolton. And now another heater misses outside. Here's the one, two. Oh. Bolton gets a piece of it. Kind of lunged at it. Yeah, it's a pitch you just try. got to try to fight off if you're Eric Bolton. Uh, it looked like a good sharp curveball again. Um, he made the decision to swing and obviously just had to foul it off. One, two, outside. Oh, he's got himself back into the count. And here's 2-2, two -two. that's a bouncer. Gonzalez takes off for third, throw down, we'll get him. It just did not bounce away far enough. And Dylan throws out Gonzalez to end the inning. So we'll go to the third with the Kings leading one nothing. Top of the third, Kings leading one nothing. Uh, top of the order due up and Gage Taylor will bunt. And that's gonna go up into the stands and it's caught by one of our interns, Greg. Yeah, give him a round of applause. It's a great play, Greg, great play. Smooth hands, <laughs> soft did, hands. Did everything right, yeah. caught it with two hands, that's, a, that's what you're taught to do. Oh one. Looked good, but it rolled a ball. Maybe a little bit inside. In all my years of doing this, I've only had a couple of balls come close to me. A ground ball right back to Loppy on it. He'll run it over and underhand it to Webb for the out. Anyway, um, 
Now batting number 19. But they've been catchable. Copeland. They've yeah. all been laser beams. <laughs> <laughs> have to duck out of the way. Of yeah. That brings in Copeland. He's singled, and he's going to single at least here. Oh, that might be, that yeah. might be three. Yeah, it's going to be at least two, and it goes all the way to the wall before Crew gets there. Cope, Copeland's is going to be at third with a one-out triple. Boy, he just smoked that ball into the gap. He's hit Loppy on a hard t both times. He's looking first pitch fastball there and smokes it in the left center gap. Yeah, that ball, uh, you knew right out the box that that was going to have a chance to uh, – get to the wall, and, and it did. I mean, that ball was absolutely smoked, and as you said, Copeland's hit the ball on the button twice. Tanner Burns grounded out to third his first time up, and he's going to hit one out into right field. That's going to hook foul, though. Mercanjo will watch it land just off the fence. That's actually one that... You don't. Uh, you want to get it out, I guess, but. Well, yeah, yeah but you don't want to make yeah. that play and then have that run come across easy, obviously. Time called. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, this is some late time calls here. Yeah, that was one of them there, but he doesn't get it granted. Sometimes they haven't gotten them granted. Yeah, that's happened a couple of times tonight. Happened in the last inning uh, to DJ Dillon. 0-1 from LaPiana, misses outside. A ground ball to third would not do any good here, I don't think. I, don't, I mean, you would be able to freeze that runner. Oh, well that works too, as LaPiana is able to freeze it. He threw it high, but Webb, whew, able to just get that and get back down on the base to get the out. Yeah, I think uh, that was a heck of a play over there uh, by Christian Webb. Uh, I mean, it's his first uh, start uh, at first base this year and had to make a tough play there. It shouldn't have been that tough, but <laughs> it was, and he made it. Uh, way to go get that ball. A good pitch, though, by uh, by Lapion. I think he saw it burns off. I think he broke that bat. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you could hear it. And pitch outside to West. Walked his first time up. The you know, one. Ooh, big cut, but nothing doing. West was thinking about the the trees out <laughs> beyond left field. Yeah, that was a big healthy hack there by Noah West. He got the fastball. I think that's uh, what Champion City's been sitting on all day is the fastball. When they got it, they're taking good swings at it. 0-2, swing and a miss, strike three. They'll have to complete the strikeout, and they'll do just that, bolting the web, and how about that, strand and one out triple. Good job by LaPiana getting uh, ground out right back to him that he made a little interesting, but <laughs> got out of it, and then gets the strikeout to end the inning. Bottom of the third coming up. It's Champion City 1, bottom of nothing.
Eric Bolton leads it off here in the bottom of the third. Bottom of the order due up for the Blue Sox and Maglione and Marcondre to follow. And Bolton got to look at um, right the first time. He went 3-2 count with him before Gonzalez was caught trying to take third on a wild pitch. Pitch a little bit low. You have all the Blue Sox batters that have seen uh, James Wright tonight. Bolton's probably uh, seen him the most, as you said, and uh, got it to a full count. Um, probably the most pitches in and at bat against Wright thus far. Uh, hard foul ball off the, fr the fence in front of the Kings dugout. Here's the one, two. Yeah, you strike out on a off-speed pitch. When you got to gear up for a fastball as heavy as Wright's is, or it seems at least, it seems like it just jumps off the jump. Yeah, you know, has very good velocity. Yeah, and sometimes you're going to get caught looking at or swinging early on those curveballs. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that's why James Wright was so effective in the last ball game against Butler. He, you know, he's got that good fastball and he's got a good curveball as well. Maglione takes a big hack and it'll go foul outside the stadium. Maglione made his debut last night when Corey Wheeler went down with after a collision in center field with Ben Carew. And now hard liner right to the third baseman Burns who stabs it for the out. He couldn't hit a ball better than that. No. Unfortunately, the third baseman was there. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh Hit that one hard, uh, as I write in my book, line out five hard in yeah. all caps. That's what, that's a, as my uh, old coach at Westminster would say, that's a that's a hard hit, that's a circle in the book, uh, although it doesn't do you any good. Yeah, that's right. And here's Mercon to the nine hitter. down, or no, it's one and one, I beg your pardon. But uh, yeah, Wheeler ended up uh, with an injury that was uh, severe enough that the Blue Sox had to release him today. Unfortunately, his summer season is cut short. Chopper in the hole, fielded by West, throwing time, and that'll end the third. We'll go to the fourth with the Blue Sox down one nothing. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox! Well, we've cruised through three innings, and the Kings lead 1-0 so far. And they're up here to begin the fourth. It'll be Larry Kreisler against Lapiano, who's surrendered three hits and one unearned, unearned run to this point. Foul ball off of the end of the bat. See what's going on around the league here in a little bit. See how the paints are faring tonight. They've been just off to a wonderful start. Same with the Springfield Sliders out west. Pitch outside here. Yeah, Kokomo leading Lafayette, one nothing in the bottom of the third. West Virginia and 
Chillicothe just underway. And in the bottom half of the first, Terre Haute and Springfield scoreless. Quincy and Danville still yet to get underway. They Well, they're an hour behind us, so that's why. Uh, ground ball to short. Benson fields it on two hops. Throw to first is in time to get him. That was closer than I thought it was going to be, but they do get the out. Yeah, Chrysler did a good job there hustling down the line. Um, that was a two hopper. I mean, he hit it, you know, pretty well. Uh, I mean, he just hit it on the ground, got on top of it, but didn't think for a second that play was going to be that close. Uh, Benson kind of took his time over there at short, but nonetheless gets gets the out over there. Then brings in Dillon, walked and scored the lone run so far. Lafayette misses outside. Nick Bucci will go for the Blue Sox tomorrow. Called strike here. Out in Lafayette. That's a seven hour ride tomorrow. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. One time this year that they'll have to make that trip out to the uh, other half of the league, the other division, the West. Called strike here. Play two Lafayette, and one in Lafayette, two in Danville, then come back to Lafayette and finish it off before heading home for a day. Foul ball here. And then going down to West Virginia for two. And then we'll... Be back home next Thursday for co uh, the face Kokomo on the first Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> Dollar beers and pop. Here, expect a big crowd for that foul ball back, straight back by Dylan. He stays alive at one and two. Good at bat here so far by DJ Dylan. Uh, one two count, and he's just trying to fight this ball off against Lapiana, trying to. Hit a mistake. He gets him to lay off here. It's a tough pitch to lay off. We've seen several guys yep. swing through that here this evening. And now uh, he gets him with a curveball. Yeah, Good. and we 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 uh, you kind of saw that curveball coming, but uh, just locked up DJ Dillon. Uh, might have been looking fastball, and got the curveball. And uh, again, uh, Lapiana, what that what is that six? Six Ks already. Six I mean. Ks, five of them of the swinging variety. He's got only he only got one guy rung up so far. This has been a good outing for a guy <laughs> that's pitching on just three days rest. With the uh, scratch to Nolan Krivajansky tonight, he was called upon. The uh, ball is a little flare out in the center field. That'll fall for a two-out single. Swetland is two for two. Although the last time he got a hit, it, it ended up being a calamity. <laughs> he ended up being <laughs> thrown out at third <laughs> with Bolton covering. Yeah. Uh, good job there by, by Swetland. That might have been another off-speed pitch. It looked like he kind of maybe got it off the end of the bat. He didn't get all of it, or he fisted it out there out of center field. But... Uh, that's just hitting the ball where, where they ain't, and that's what that's what uh, you're supposed to do as a batter. McLaughlin grounds to second. Maglione's got it, throw to first in time to end the inning. <laughs> so, no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Champion City one, Butler nothing.
Ben Carew. Ben Carew leads off here in the bottom of the fourth with the Kings leading 1-0. Blue Sox without a hit so far. In fact, uh, Wright has faced a minimum to this point. Yeah, the only blemish is a, oh, this is a bunt that oh. will bounce back foul. That would have been a hit, but, but it, it bounced the wrong way. Yeah, that was, uh, well, it's not exactly what you want to do on the, on the <laughs> bunt. You don't want to <laughs> pop it straight up, but it almost ended up working uh, for Ben Crew. Just, that ball just had a ton of backspin on it, went off the top of the bat, uh, landed probably three or four feet in front of uh, home plate, but just bounced backwards. You're right, if it had bounced. Any other way, it probably would have stayed fair, would have been a base hit. Yeah, Dylan looked down, it looked like. He didn't know where it went, and then they were starting to yell up from the dugout, and by that time, neither one of them were able to get to it. If I think if they would have saw it off the bat, probably would have just caught it. Yeah, I think I think Wright expected um, expected DJ Dylan to go get that ball. Yeah. He said up right away and then realized, oh, he's not going to go get it. I have to go get it. Uh, we'll flare into foul territory going over to make... The catch is the first baseman Swetland for the first out. And right, uh, the thing about James Wright that, that I like is he just keeps getting ahead of these guys. I mean, he's he's pounding the zone right away. He really hasn't fallen behind much. He, he does have one walk. Um, he he walked Ray Gonzalez earlier in the in the game. That was in the second inning. But other than that, I mean, he's throwing a ton of strikes and. You got to credit Butler, though, and they know that he's throwing strikes, and they're taking hacks at it. They just haven't been able to, you know, string anything together. Yeah, that's that's the real problem. Is that you're right. They're taking hacks, but <laughs> they really haven't hit anything all that hard other than Maglione's hard line out. Nothing really of any significance yeah. that, that would uh, worry you if you're the Kings at this point. One one. Pitch is low. But the thing is, it's one nothing. One right, swing yeah. and you're right back in it. Although Ferguson's got the night off, but some That's of these true. guys have That's some true. power. I, I feel like anybody who's left handed here, if they get a hold yeah, of one, can get shot. one out. Yeah. yeah. Well, that one's hit into the air, out into shallow left center. Left fielder Taylor calls off Chrysler, makes the catch, and it's just been. Everything's been all right for Mr. Wright out there. He's yeah. Solid. Yeah, he has been solid, and he's just getting ahead, and, you know, he's throwing strikes. That's the main thing, you know, and out of a starter, you know, that's all you can expect them to do is throw strikes and let everything else fall where it may, and so far, everything's falling pretty darn good for James Wright. Gulikowski swings and misses at a low fastball. He fouled out to the catcher in his first at-bat. Lukowski way behind again. He he was, he's, doesn't seem like he's got that same uh, confidence that he had last week, where he was just swinging very well and getting a couple hits a game. And here's the 0-2. That's outside. One, two, swing and miss, strike three. And that'll end it. 12 up, well, no, I guess not 12 up, 12 down, but he's, fa he's faced a minimum through four. One base runner to this point, that was on a walk. So we'll go to the fifth. Butler trails one nothing.
Dinner. Josh Lopion, his night is done. He goes four innings in his his um, three day rest start. Allows four hits, one unearned run. And he walked two and struck out six. And he'll be replaced by Ryan Gray from LSU Shreveport. Got an inning last night. And he gave up a run. Struck out a couple guys. Yeah, now uh, it all... It's on the shoulders of Ryan Gray. Uh, you got to credit Lapiana. He did all he could. And to be honest with you, on three days rest, it's probably a plus to get four four innings of one run ball out of Josh Lapiana. And striking out six in the process is pretty good as well. But now Ryan Gray's just got to come in there and, and, and try to throw uh, as many strikes as he can, just like Lapiana did. Trying to get you some numbers on Ryan Gray, but my computer is froze. That's great. Uh, well, he's behind 2-0 and to the 9-hitter Bafia here. Here's the pitch. Check swing. I would appeal that one. Yeah, he went around. That's, that's a good call by our bases umpire, Mark Schmidt. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that, that swing helps uh, Ryan Gray out. He's he had thrown uh, two balls to that point, and then the ball in the dirt he swings at. Uh, bouncer. Trampolines off the plate, and it's three and one. Oh boy! Well, a little liner out into right field. That'll be a base hit. Mafia with a leadoff single here. It sounds like he might have broke his bat on that. It didn't sound like clean contact, let's we'll put it that way, but it was enough to get it out there in the right field for a base hit. Yeah, that's all that matters. Looked like um, looked like Merkonja had a thought about uh, throwing the ball to first base, trying to get Bafia out. Uh, that ball was, wasn't was hit all that hard, though. That kind of slowed it up once it got out there to Merkonja. Oh, big swing by Taylor, but he comes up empty. He's, uh, he's over for two so far. And now he pops it up. This should be playable for Gulikowski in foul territory. He's got it for the first out. And yeah, that's a, I don't want to say it, that's not a, a big out, but that's a, a confidence booster there uh, for Ryan Gray as he really didn't uh, have that good of a, a, a sequence against Bathia and gave up a single in there. Gets Gage Taylor to pop out. Now ground ball, you're out of the inning. Well, this is the guy who's been the toughest one to get out so far, Copeland. He's through his bat. He's upset. They're all upset that the umpire. To be honest, I was looking at my computer. I didn't see what happened. What it was a hit by pitch, and then the umpire is making him stay. Uh, it must not have moved out of the way of that one. Didn't make an attempt. And you don't normally see that called no. too much. That's probably why. So it's, it's just the ball. Yeah, it's just the ball. <laughs> Pitch bounces away, but blocked well by Bolton to keep the runner at first. That's interesting. You're right. I, I don't know. He does have his elbow hanging right up on top of the plate. That chops it foul. Almost took... A coach with it. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably why the home plate umpire called him back. That's probably why um, Patrick McConville did did call him back because you're right. His I didn't even notice that his elbow uh, well over the plate and probably just you know threw it out there and, and, and got hit. Problem is he still called it a ball. So if it well, was a ball and it hit him, then he's not hanging over the plate. Well, I think it was a ball. I I just think he. Uh, he, he kept his elbow out as he moved out of the way. He made it look good, put it that way. Okay, all right, I got you. All right, 2-2 with one out after a nice curveball from Gray. 
Still trying to finish it off here. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Oh, no. Take take it back. A foul tip. So, runner no, will have to no, head. He, he no, he uh, Bach. Oh. Bach was called. That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's now... Uh, he, that's amazing. He called a Bach, and he didn't even, like... He wasn't very vocal about it. There well, was no, no like, he came home. Like, yeah. normally on a Bach, the guy steps off or does something strange. Instead... Okay. Yeah, I didn't really see much. Uh, I don't know if, if Gray didn't come to a complete pause or what the call was. And I saw the, the umpire out there, uh, Mark Schmidt, uh, motioned to him with his, something with his hands. I don't know. Obviously can't make it out from up here, but I, I couldn't tell what it was. Well, good, good on you for seeing that. Bouncer blocked by Bolton. And it's three and two. Well, payoff pitch is wide for ball four. And there's two men on with one out. Now batting for the Kings, number 21, third baseman, Tanner Burns. I almost feel like if that ball would have been caught clean by Bolton, that might have had a chance to be a stray. It looked like a good curve ball. Just looked a lot worse, obviously, because it went off his mitt and rolled towards the first base dug. I would have liked to see if he could have caught that and framed it up where that pitch would have been. The ball hit well to left field and fairly deep. Murphy's on the run. He makes the catch out there. What a job by Murphy on the run with a almost like a basket catch. And able to f not only make the catch, but with the runners so far off the base, nobody's able to advance. Yeah, that was a huge play there out there by, by Tanner Murphy. And you're right, he, he, ha he knew the ball was going to be over his head. He turned, went on a dead sprint, and caught that ball over his right shoulder. And as you said, almost a basket catch over the shoulder. Now there's two outs in this inning. As bad as uh, the last two batters have gone, or uh, excuse me, the two batters previous to that one, you know, got a chance to get out of this inning. Noah West swings and misses. Put a little star beside that F7 because that gets down oh, three yeah. nothing. No doubt about that. Swing and a miss. West fooled by a pair of curveballs from Gray. Let's see if he can get out of this inning. This is a big pitch here. He's got West to chase two, uh, probably curveballs, two off-speed pitches in the dirt, uh, or in the turf, excuse me, yeah. no dirt. And the 0-2 is upstairs. Uh, the curveball just, it's actually, it's a curveball that thankfully didn't break. Yeah, that would have <laughs> been middle, middle <laughs> if it did. Yeah, you're <laughs> that exactly was right. <laughs> that was ticketed for the uh, hot zone, as they, they call it now. It, that would have been right down Broadway. Thankfully, it stayed up high. So fastball popped up. This should get him out of it. Webb, in foul territory, can't make the catch because it, or did he? He did make the catch. How about that? He, he somehow was there. There must have been about a millimeter between. Yeah, I, I think he put his glove hand on the fence first and then kind of ran into it a little bit. I think he <laughs> I think he caught his glove off the railing. That's why you heard the ooh. I think people heard the, the thud of him hitting the, the railing, but hey, nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, Ryan Gray gets out of the inning there. Yeah, no runs, one hit, no errors. Two men left on base. The Kings have left six men, or, yeah, six men on base tonight. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth with Champion City ahead one nothing.
Bottom of the fifth here, the only man to reach base for the Blue Sox so far is going to lead off. That's Ray Gonzalez. He walked in the second inning. So having said that, I mean, with only one guy reaching base to this point, uh, it's, that might sound like it's been a bad night, but the uh, pitching has kept the Blue Sox in it. It's one nothing. Uh, five hits for the Kings so far. Of course, a big goose egg on on the board for the Blue Sox to this point, and then one one error for Butler and none for Champion City. I'm Jaron Steele, joined by Kellen Gersky. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, pitch outside. It's one and one to Gonzalez, who worked a, probably the best at bat out of anybody. Maybe outside Eric Bolton's first at bat that ended up with the out for Gonzalez at third base, uh, drawing that walk back in the second inning. Yeah, this is an important inning here, um, not only for for the Blue Sox but for James Wright. Um, kind of sat a, a little longer than he normally did, normally does. Excuse me. Um, in that last inning, and now comes back and faces the man who had probably, as you said, the best at bat against him. Gonzalez, like a little bit upset with himself. He must have really liked that fastball that he saw because he he got a good cut on it, but he found it into the net. And when they say when you foul it straight back like that, it means you're pretty close yeah, to being right on it. You're right on it, yeah. I mean, he just fouled it straight back, didn't miss it by a whole lot. Let's see what he does here. And he strikes out. Dylan will have to throw it first to complete it, and he does so. One down here in the fifth for Christian Webb. Webb is uh, 0 for 1. He struck out in the second inning. And that last strikeout there of Gonzalez, that is uh, Wright's sixth so far in this game. Called strike here to Webb from Cal U. And here's the 0-1. It's a little bit low. Looked pretty good, but fastball not called a strike by Mr. Pecanville. A little chopper off the plate that hits Webb is immediately dead. Here's the one, two. Oh, that's a ball hit well to right field, but right at the right fielder, McLaughlin, who makes the catch. And yeah, there's two outs. That's about the hardest hit ball we've seen. Well, I can't get back. I, Maglione's ball was harder, but that was about his second best, I yeah. guess, of the night. It was the furthest ball hit. Yeah. Know, put it that way. Yeah. A good, a good at bat there by Christian Webb. Uh, he got the two strikes, but. Uh, I think it was a curveball that caught the middle of the zone. And he, as a lefty, you know, he just pulled it down that line, and hit it well, just couldn't get it. Chopper to third, and the throw across by Burns in time, and, and at the end of five, through five the innings, Mister Wright has no hit. The Blue Sox will go to the sixth, and it's Champion City one, Butler nothing. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesox.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox!
Ready to go here in the top of the sixth. Larry Chrysler against Ryan Gray. Pop up into the cloudy sky. Doesn't seem to be a problem for Maglione. He's got it for the out. Yeah, and so far, um, it's been that way for Ryan Gray. He's gotten a lot of pop-ups. I mean, that's his third pop-up um, so far, and he's only uh, pitched for an inning, an inning and a third. Yeah, here's uh, Dylan walking a strikeout and the only run of the game so far. He scored in the second inning, and that's held up to this point. Curveball bounces in. Train whistle off in the bis uh, off in the distance. So it might have been a foul tip. But anyways, yeah. it's a strike regardless. Yeah, regardless, it's a just a strike. It's good news for the Blue Sox. And, uh, babe, the ox out in the bullpen. Maybe trying to put some bad voodoo on the Kings here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's got to do something. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 Kings have had the Blue Sox number thus far this year, and Babe trying to do all he can. One nothing. And here's the pitch. It's a bouncer. Oh, pitch up and in. Dylan will have to get out of the way just a tad. The ball hit foul That's over to babe. Yeah, babe, look out. Yeah, he survived it. <laughs> really wasn't all that close, no. I suppose. But I'm telling you, if, you, if you're in that arc suit <laughs> and a ball's coming at you, you ain't seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You don't have a chance. Here's another 3 2. It's outside for ball four. A one out walk. Basically, out of the first inning for Gray went. He got a pop up and walked the guy. And then got, got a uh, web gem from Murphy. And then another pop up. So, Webb be ready out there. Or, I'm um, sorry, uh, Murphy be ready yeah. out there. <laughs> it might follow suit. Who knows? Jet Swetland's two for two tonight. Gray checks and then comes home with a curveball that bounces in. Yeah, Gray just one pitch away here, though. And although Swetland, probably the, the one of the guys in the lineup you don't want to come up uh, for Champion City, as you mentioned, two for two on the day. Yeah, foul ball. Yeah, I, Swetland, he pitched, uh, he played very well last summer. Uh, hit the ball well to start yep. the season, and at the end of the year, he started out as a like two or three hitter, and then by the end of the summer, he was hitting eighth. He just uh, fell into a swoon in July and never really got out of it. 2-1 curveball. Well inside. And now you're in danger of back-to-back -back walks. Yeah, just want to throw a strike here uh, to Swetland. You don't want to be fat, though. You don't want to give up something that he can crush by any means. Well, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. You got him to pull pitch foul. Now a full count here. Wouldn't be surprised to see Champion City uh, try to get the running game going. Maybe, uh, maybe get a uh, hit and run on. You know, uh, it's a good count to do it in. And he's gonna stay put. Three, two, popped up foul. That would have been ball four if he would have let it go. Yeah. Definitely, and that's a that's a pitch you would swing at if it was a hit and run almost. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, uh, not exactly the ideal swing, but nonetheless, uh, Swetland stays alive and uh, makes Gray throw another pitch. Runner goes this time. It's a bounce. It doesn't matter. He can just put on the brakes and head into second because that's back-to-back -back walks. And now Bolton will go out and have a word with Gray.
And that brings in McLaughlin, who's 0 for 2. This is the first time tonight, though, he'll face a, a right-handed pitcher. Looks like he's got a... Uh, it's either a sleeve on his arm, or his arm is full of tattoos. Foul ball. Rick White had to <laughs> dive out of the way of that. I'm pretty sure that's just a... A regular sleeve. I don't think that's a tattoo. That is a sleeve. Okay, yeah, you're right. I see a logo there at the end. It, but almost, yeah, it almost seems like it's... Skin color. Yeah, almost, skin yeah. color, yeah. So it, it could go either way, but I think you're right. It's just a sleeve. Yo, one. Go. Call to strike. Now you got him 0-2. You can try to put him away here or maybe induce a ground ball. Yeah, try to, that would probably be the best bet. Just try to get a... Uh, a ground ball at someone. Now step off. Well, lined into the gap. That's trouble out into Right center, Makanji gets to it, not before at least one run's coming in. Here comes another one. Throw to the plate by Maglione is not in time. And on that, McLaughlin will move up to third. He, two RBI double, and that is a lot of insurance for the way Wright's pitching tonight. It's now 3 nothing. Yeah, and that was uh, too good, way too good of an 0-2 pitch. Uh, if, you're, if you're Ryan Gray, and um, I'm sure he would tell you that as well, and... Just caught too much of the plate, and McLaughlin did a, a great job um, getting that, that pitch and getting some good wood on it and uh, driving it out to the gap. And now ground ball just foul up the first baseline by Boffia. And the 01 curveball hit out of the stadium. Probably singled and then actually that's the first batter that Gray faced tonight. And then balked or moved the second on a balk by Gray. Ground ball. Fielded by Maglio, and he'll throw to first, but the run will come in to score. A 4-3 RBI makes it 4 nothing. Yeah, good job there uh, by Devin Baffia. Down, uh, he had 0-2, had two strikes on him, but a good job uh, just putting that ball in play, knowing that uh, anything to the right side will score that run, and, and rightfully so, a ground ball to the right side gets that run home. That's a very good hitting. I mean, that's that's a, the small stuff that wins games. Where you know if you're gonna make that out, you you're gonna force in, a, you know you're gonna get a run in. Right. And you know uh, teams that win games do those types of things on a on a regular basis. And the Kings have done it on a regular basis here in the four games that they faced them. Pop up to third. Gulikowski's got it. And that will end the inning, but not before three kings come across on just one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. We'll go to the bottom half of the sixth inning with Butler down 4 nothing.
seven. Eric Bolton leads off here. So far through five innings. Right has faced the minimum. And the bottom of the order is due up here. Pitch inside. The only blemish on the scorecard so far for Wright is a walk back in the second inning to Gonzalez. And he ends up getting erased on stolen base. Ball hit well, but well foul as well by <laughs> by Bolton. Straighten that out a little bit. Struck out swinging his first time up. 1-1, one, one, misses a little bit away. Well, this is what Butler's gonna have to do. They're gonna have to try to get uh, ahead in some counts, to get in good hitters counts and, and put some good swings on it. Running out of outs here. That one hit him, I think. Yep, it did. Bolton will head down to first on hit by pitch. Now batting number 21, the second base. It's the first runner since the leadoff man in the second inning. That just shows how dominant that, that James Wright has been so far. Well, here's Maglio, and he had the hardest hit of anyone yeah. in a Blue Sox uniform tonight back in the... Third inning, and <laughs> he almost takes a couple of heads off on a foul ball here, but everybody's all right. It looks like Maglione's committing real early. He's going, he's going, he's going to throw me a fastball. Yeah. I'm, I'm he's going to hit it. I'm he's going to swing. That's right. I'm just setting on Ooh. it. Ooh. Uh, that ball up around the head, <laughs> but. Uh, I saw immediately, it looked like Wright gave a yeah, my chest, bad, yeah, yeah. That, that was not intentional by any means. Check of first, and here's the pitch. Magloon takes high. He's looking for his first hit. With Butler, but he's only had two yeah. at bats to this point, or yeah, only two. Time called. Two one bounces in. Uh, nice block by Dylan. But now you got yourself in a yeah. chance to get two men on, nobody out, and yeah. really be. Dangerous for the first time yeah, tonight. Yeah, honestly, yeah, you're exactly right, it, and um, and it's a good hitter's count here too for for uh, for Maglione. Right, pauses, and then comes home. Maglione pops it up. It might fall. Yeah, it might fall in. In shallow center, coming across, and then not able to make the catch is a diving McLaughlin, and the Blue Sox have their first hit of the night, courtesy of Maglione. A little blooper that found its way to the grass. That probably would have been ball four, too, to be honest with you. It probably would have been ball four, but um, <laughs> Butler will sure take it, I'm sure. First hit of the ball game. And now, as you said, uh, they're dangerous for the first time. Two men on, nobody out. Um, base it here, probably scores one. Yeah, here's Merkonji grounded out the shortstop his first time up, and it looks like the minimum streak's going to be over unless there's a triple play here. Yeah, yeah. Conja shows bunt, but pulls it back. That's a tough first hit to give up. Yeah, oh, that, that. You got a credit out there, though. The, the right fielder, McLaughlin. that's McLaughlin. <laughs> I mean, he came full head of steam. Yeah. He laid out for it. Just He almost had it. He got a glove on it, it looked like. Just couldn't haul it in. Superman out there. Nice bunt by Merconja. Only play will be the first, and they will get the out there. Oh, no, they won't. The ball falls out of the mid of Sweatland, and the bases are loaded. Yeah, that's going to be uh, probably an E3. I mean, that was an easy play. It looked like it went yeah. right to his glove. That's got to be on the first baseman. Yeah, I would assume so. I mean, it, he was going to be out by a, probably a good two feet. And, it's uh, still a sacrifice hit, though. Yeah, yeah, it's still a sacrifice. No, yep. And that'll be sacrifice hit E3. Most of, normally, you, you, you give that error to the um, 
to the thrower, but that was definitely on the on the. Oh yeah, right to the mitt. He did everything he was supposed to do. Here's Carew. He's 0 for 2. Time called. And now the Blue Sox are in business. Nobody out. Bases loaded. They're down 4 nothing. but you get a couple runs back here, and they get maybe into that bullpen. Maybe you can find yourself back in yeah. this game. I mean, bases, as you said, a uh, base hit here completely, completely changes the, the complexion of this ball game. Only one hit to your credit thus far, and uh, now you have the bases loaded, and, and another one here could completely change things. Time called, and Rick White's going to go over everything with the infield here. All right, so let's go around the league here. How about uh, Danville putting up seven in the top of the first out in Quincy? So rough start for the Gems tonight. 5-4 Kokomo over Lafayette in the top of the fifth. We got 2-1 West Virginia over Chillicothe in the top of the third. And Springfield and Terre Haute are tied at one in the bottom of the fourth out in Terre Haute. Now meeting is just about over. So Bolton is at third, Maglione at second, and Merconja at first. They just gave, whoa. I think they, on yeah. the scoreboard, they gave a, a hit to Merconja. That should probably be an error. Yeah, it should definitely be an error. I mean, he wouldn't have reached base if no. he dropped that no. ball. They had him out. Oh. Carew with a ball fouled off over the top of the Kings bullpen just a little bit early. Yeah. And, they, they, and what, uh, Butler, excuse me, has done that uh, tonight. They, they've put some good swings on balls foul. They've hit the ball hard, uh, just hasn't, as we said, with only one hit to their credit, um, haven't, haven't found a hole yet. Right, ready to go. Here's the pitch. Carew checks his swing, takes a called strike on the outer half. Yeah, that's a tough, tough pitch to uh, take a hack at. That's on the outer half. It's a pitcher's pitch, gets the call there is James Wright, but that's a tough pitch to do anything with. And Carew with a little flare that's that will hook. just yep. hook foul. That, if that's fair down the line, that's uh, maybe all three of them come in to score. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And, and he did everything right there, did, did Ben Carew. He shortened the swing up, just slapped at it, tried to meet the ball, didn't try to do too much with it. Uh, tried to slap it over the head of Swetland over there at first base, but just uh, just hooked foul. And ball popped out of play again. Carew doing a great job here of fouling off some pitches, staying alive, giving himself a chance. Yeah, that's, what, that's exactly right. That's what you got to do. If you're Ben Crew, you just got to give yourself a chance, especially when you're in a negative count like this, one, two. Um, you're waiting to, to get a pitch that you could put in play and put in play hard and, and then let things fall where they may. But, I mean, Carew's doing a good job thus far. Well, here we go again. The pitch. Foul tip. Oh, just got a piece of it. Now I got Dylan, yeah, and he's hurt. Right in the hand. Yeah, Dylan brought that, his bare hand up. Um... I don't know. I, I don't know why he did that, but <laughs> he just brought it up, and unfortunately for him, the the foul tip uh, by Carew right into the hand. And I mean, it's a it's a cold night here in, in Butler, and that's got a that's got a sting. You can see he's shaking his hand out now. My goodness, that's uh that's no fun. Let no, me tell you, not at all. First baseman playing in front of the runner. And now another foul ball by Carew. He's wasting a lot of baseballs here, but keeping himself alive. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, it's a darn good at bat. I mean, even if even if Carew uh, ends up getting out here, I mean, he, he's done all he can here in this at bat. I mean, he's fouled probably four pitches off in a row now. I'd like to see him get rewarded for this. He fouls oh. it again. Thank Carew. Have, my goodness, what a battle. The problem is he, he's still in a one-two yeah, count every yeah, time. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. gained on the exactly, count. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that, that pitch was high. It was up there, and that's exactly where Wright wanted to throw that ball. That's where Dylan wanted it. High and probably about letter high um, to Carew, but Carew, again, fights it off. And now a line drive right at the shortstop. This will be a 6-4 
three double play. That was a close play at first. It goes against the Blue Sox. A run comes in to score, but that's about the worst possible outcome. Yep. Yeah, you do, you do get a run, but you're exactly right. And that's a shame uh, for Carew. He had such a, a good at bat, and then to have that result, yeah, that just stinks. West to Copeland to Swetland, 6 4 3 goes Ben Carew. No RBI on the play because of the double play, and the Blue Sox do get a run. It's 4 to 1. Runner Bolton is now at third base. No, I'm sorry, Maglia and Bolton come in to score, and Benson takes a strike. Now, if you're Butler, you got Benson. You would like to see him get a base hit here and at least salvage two runs out of this yeah. inning. Yeah, bases loaded, nobody out. You only score a run, one run. That's not where you want to be. That'll ball hit work. pretty well, but oh, this is gonna, gonna hang, yeah, yeah, hanging up in center field. Chrysler's got it, and that'll do it here. Blue Sox get one, and we'll go to the seventh. It's Champion City four, Butler one. New pitcher for the Blue Sox here in the seventh. That's Jack Herzing on the mound. He'll replace Ryan Gray, who went two innings without three runs on two hits, three walks, and no strikeouts. 4-1, Champion City. Blue Sox had a big chance to cut into that lead even further last inning, but uh, unfortunately, Ben Crew, great at bat, yep. uh, lines a <laughs> one hopper right to the shortstop for 6-4-3 double play. One run comes in to score, but... That was yeah. that was unfortunate, especially after the yeah. at-bat he had. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why baseball is one of the most frustrating Bay sports, Bay. I think. Well, Herzing's ahead 0-2 here on the big Mac hitter, Copeland, and Herzing then maybe got a little excited. <laughs> got the uh, got got the juices flowing there, <laughs> thinking about getting, getting the big yeah, Mac. Yeah, and he wants to get everybody a big Mac. I'll take one. <laughs> he, th <laughs> he threw he threw one to the <laughs> fan in section. Uh, two row C, <laughs> the middle of the. Yeah, now now it's a ball. It's two two. All right, here we go. One more time. Check swing, appeal, no swing. I think that's the right call. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think this would be the first. No, we got it last night. Oh, I wasn't here. Yep. There you go. All right. Here's the payoff. 
It's outside yeah. ball four. Instead of a Big Mac, it's a leadoff walk. Unfortunate, Herzing had him 0-2, and I, uh, I think he just got a little too excited there, especially with the third pitch. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know, get a guy 0-2 and then walk him. It's never what you want to see, but uh, Herzing, uh, he's, he's got an opportunity here. He, he's got to get this one. Pop foul by Burns, 0 for 3. But he was robbed by Murphy out in left field. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a big play. And this game could be um, a lot different. Had uh, Could be 7-1 right yeah, that's now. That's right. You're exactly right. Here's the pitch. Herzing <laughs> misses outside. Jack from Penn State Barron goes to or is a native of St. Mary's. 6'2", 200 pounds. Played with the B Blue Sox last summer. Foul ball here. Oh, scares some people in the first row. <laughs> Thankfully, it's just a scare, not a ball on top of the head. Yeah. Another foul ball. Herzing in a good count here. He's... Up one, two, doesn't want to make the same mistake that he did to, to Copeland and walk him. The ball hit hard, base hit out into right field. And that'll put runners on first and second. First hit of the night for Burns, and it was slapped hard through the hole. Yep, and a uh, good piece of hitting uh, by Tanner Burns, just slapping that ball the other way. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he, Herzing threw that pitch where he wanted to on the outer half, but uh, just couldn't get it past him, and, and you got to credit Burns there on just a good, pe good piece of hitting. Well, runners go throw down to third. They got him at third base. Oh, they called him safe. Oh, no. He must have slid around the tag. And there, yeah, there could be, and I heard a fan yeah. yell, it could be interference from the batter, really. He stood his ground, but just didn't uh, move at all um, for for uh, Bolton back there. And uh, the runner steals third, thought he was out. And that'll be a run, probably. Yeah, ball hit well to right field. Merkonja underneath it makes the catch, and the Kings will get that run back. On a sacrifice fly by West, that makes it now five to one. Number 30, center fielder Larry Chrysler. Just can't beat the Kings. Well, they still got time, but it's not looking good again here tonight. Tell you what, Herzing, uh, I was just running into some bad luck. I remember the one time I was on, I think it was against Champion City, um, came in uh, in, a, in a blowout and then just couldn't <laughs> get a strike called for him, and now it's a, a tough break there. Well, you get the strike out here of Chrysler for the second out and on three pitches nonetheless. Now batting number 35, the catcher, D.J. Dillon. And D.J. Dillon will be up next. He walked and scored in the sixth. Herzing's first pitch swung on and missed. Uh, ground ball to short. Benson's throw will get Dylan for the out. But the uh, Kings get that run right back on one hit. No errors and one man left. Stretch time at Kelly Automotive Park. The Blue Sox are down five to one.
Taylor Clemens will come in to relieve James Wright. Goes six innings tonight. Well, just one run. Took a no-hitter into the sixth. And that would be an unearned run, I believe, because of the sacrifice hit E3. Yeah, yeah, it would. And so one hit allowed tonight for Wright on... Let's see. Six strikeouts, and he allowed one walk and hit a batter. Gulikowski is in a 1-1 count with Clemens, left-hander from the University of Alabama, Huntsville. And Gulikowski hits the ball pretty well, but playable for Chrysler, who makes the catch for the first out here in the bottom of the seventh. Now seven. And brings up Bray Gonzalez. He's had two good at-bats and they walked and then uh, ended up striking out after a hard fought battle with Wright in the fifth. Pitch outside. Clemens has appeared in two games. One of them was against Butler here last week. He pitched a clean inning, striking out two, but then his second outing against Chillicothe, he didn't go as well. Two and two-thirds innings, gave up four runs, all earned on five hits, one walk, and three strikeouts. So that, that balloons the ERA up to 981, but it's only two outings, so that's hard to tell. But what I do like out of it, five strikeouts in yeah. three and two-thirds innings. That's pretty good, yeah. No doubt about that. Throws hard too. He's a he's a left-hander, and obviously when you, or yeah, he's a left-hander. I don't know why I second guessed myself. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a left-hander. <laughs> Gonzalez can't catch up with a fastball. One and two. But when a lefty throws that hard, I don't know what it is. Guys just have a, a hard time hitting it, and you know you don't normally see a ton of lefties. Um, but obviously when he's throwing the ball as hard as uh, as Clemens is, that's. Recipe for success. Gonzalez checks his swing. Schmidt uh, out at first says no swing. And then even count two piece. And here's the two two. It's popped up, way up in the air. And second baseman underneath it, Copeland. For the second out. That was up there a long time. Home run in an elevator shaft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. That was a major league pop up there. Okay, here's Christian Webb 0 for 2. Train coming back through town now. <laughs> Must have. 1 0 is outside as well. And here's the 2 0. Webb fouls it off. Webb getting the start at first to give Ferguson the night off. Played the first seven games of the year, hit four home runs in those seven games. Just taking a break before the lo lo road trip where he'll probably see action every day. Pitch outside to, or now three and one. And here's the pitch. It's inside as well. Ball four, two out walk. Now batting. Number 10, left fielder Tanner Murphy. Good walk, uh, lefty lefty matchup, not favorable for Webb, and he does a good job of getting on base here. Yeah, no doubt about it. And now uh, Butler, although it is with two outs, they got a a guy on and uh, looking to string something together here. Murphy pops it up. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. That's ah, gonna be short of us. Look out, look out! Oh my goodness! That lady s t sacrificed her hand to save this poor la old, old, uh, elderly, elderly lady in front of us. Whew. 
That uh, that might have that might have dropped right on her there on her, on her head. She didn't even move. <laughs> You're right. Definitely uh, wouldn't have seen it coming. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. He definitely tapped it away. That lady sacrificed her hand there. Murphy fouls this one out of the stadium, thankfully. Ah, oh, yeah, it was up there. He's pointing up at the sky right now. This lady that almost got beat by a foul ball. Yeah. Oh, all right. O two, 2 two outs. Here's the pitch. It's a ground ball, base hit out of the left. Webber will go around second and head for third. He'll stay there. Web Murphy will be in the second with a double. Two men on here in scoring position with two outs. Yeah, good job there by Murphy. Just pulled it right down the line. And um, and now, uh, base hit scores two runs and gets you right back in the ball game. And here's Bolton. Was hit by a pitch in the sixth. Then scored so far Butler's only run after a 6-4-3 double play that crew grounded in with the bases loaded. Here's the pitch. It's a little number up the first base line. Swetlin will take it himself for the out. Okay, and that'll end it here in the seventh. No runs and one hit. No errors and two men left in scoring position. On to the eighth, Champion City five, Butler one. Top of the eighth, Jet Swetland versus Jack Herzing. Champion City five, Butler one. Yeah, seven hits tonight so far for the Kings. Two for Butler, one error apiece. And here's pitch, it's outside. Now it's 3-0. Herzing has had a, some trouble with walks here in the early part of the season. He's also, had, like Kellen said last inning, some bad luck. But when leadoff walks, both innings he's been in, they're not good. Yeah, definitely uh, not what you want to start with. Uh, I'd much rather give up a hit than you would a walk. Don't want to put on... Uh, someone for free in, in, in two innings. That's exactly what Herzing has done with the first guy that he's faced. McLaughlin, two RBI double in the sixth. Takes high. Or no, he called strike. I beg your pardon. Looked high, but called strike. Take it at this point. Lefty-lefty matchup. Here's the pitch. 
It's right there for a called strike. That's a good fastball. Yeah, right at the knees. Uh, tough for McLaughlin to do anything with that. And McLaughlin in the sixth, as you said, of that two RBI double. Uh, you take that away, and it, it's a completely different game. The 0-2 is outside. Good block by Bolton. Keeps the runner Swetland at first base. Ball fouled off. Oh, look out. Jeez, oh, man, it's two now. <laughs> that one was not, that one was, that is the worst. Whenever they hit that general mission and come straight down, nobody knows it's coming back at them until it's too late. But thankfully, again, nobody got hit by it. Foul, oh, called strike here. And Hersing records his second strikeout. Now Devin Baffia, who's one for three, but does have an RBA ground out to go along with a single. And he actually, that was the back in the uh, sixth inning when he really just did a great job of getting the ball to the you know, right side of the infield yep. to get the run in. Yeah, he did everything he needed to do there. And in this situation, though, that play would be uh, probably result in a double play. Uh, so yeah. it wouldn't work there. But uh, last inning, uh, Fantastic! Look at this, a little the bleeder. Flare. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh, it's great swinging. <laughs> well, you got to you tell. Sometimes you'll uh, you'll get that. There's a good pitch from Herzing, yep. and he just flared it out there. A little fillet job out in the left field. Yep, that's exactly what it was. It sawed him off, but it looked like he had a, almost an inside-out swing. He almost looked like he wanted to slap the ball the other way. A, a, a nice job, a good piece hitting by Baff. Yeah, actually, he's got two hits to his credit tonight. Now well, two men on with one out. Back, uh, we got a pinch hitter. Alexander Garland's going to hit for Gage Taylor here. Taylor will depart 0 for 4 tonight. 5 1 Kings. We play the top of the eighth. It'll be our last broadcast for eight days. Next Thursday is the next time we'll be on. Called strike or swinging strike by Garland. He played last night at first base, but getting the night off here tonight. Here's the up pitch. Here it is, and it's right there for a called strike. Uh, ball fouled off. Ooh. Yeah, late, late swing yeah. there by Garland, but a good job knowing uh, that pitch was going to be a strike and did all he could to foul that off. Another foul ball. That one a little better cut. Yeah, that was a much better swing, and that one went straight back to the bat stop. And as we said uh, earlier in the ball game, if you, d you hit that ball straight back, it normally means you're you're uh, right on it, uh, pretty close to hitting the ball well. No, uh, no, step off and a look back by Herzing. Uh, swing, strike, and uh, how about strike him out, throw him out to get him out of the inning here. As down at third is Swetland. Good throw by Bolton, tagged by Gulikowski. Yeah, that'll do it. We'll go to the bottom half of the eighth with Champion City leading 5-1. to one.
All right, here we go in the bottom of the eighth. Maglione, who hit the ball hard twice tonight, got rewarded once. He has a single to his credit. Takes a pitch from Clemens for a ball. All right, decently hit ball, but this will be fielded over there at second by Copeland. And 4-3 put out. I want to see who come in left field. I don't know out there. Uh, don't have my binoculars. Actually, I don't own binoculars. But yes, uh, it's not, it's not uh, no, Copeland, Garland. No, Garland, yeah, he's out. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if he has to turn around here this inning. Pitch to Merkonge is outside. And the 1-0 is up high. Is outside. Again, 3-0. Merkonja hasn't had to take the bat off his shoulder. He still won't hear. He takes ball four. <laughs> Problem tonight is lack of base runners. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, only two hits to the Blue Sox credit and what? Seven base runners. Seven base runners tonight. And, um, you know, the, the biggest chance they had was that bases loaded, nobody out six situation in the sixth and only get one run to their credit out of it. Yeah, they have seven base runners and they had the bases loaded. Yeah. Little chopper fell past a diving cope when Marconj will stay put at second. That'll be a single for Carew. And that is now third hit of the night. Two men on with one away. Yeah, and, and finally Carew gets awarded. Wish that would have been, that would have happened in the sixth inning. Um, you know, he had that great at bat and into a double play that time. First pitch swinging. It's a chopper up the middle that gets through, and he, he gets a hit to his credit there. All right, so Benson trying to break it here. 0 for 3 so far. Strike out, fly out, or pair of fly outs. And Benson watches one miss up around his eyes. So far, it's been just a tough night. No hitter by right through five innings. Whew. Benson looking for one with, <laughs> I think that, that you said it best there, Kellen. Yeah, it was a <laughs> big swing and a miss <laughs> yeah. there. He, he's going for that short porch out there in left, uh, or in right field, excuse me. Um, just missed it, and I mean, that's a big hack. Yeah, that was a huge swing. Swing and a miss here, B both runners advance no way, hit and run. It didn't matter because the ball ended up going in between Dylan's legs, and that allows the runners to move the second and third with just one out. Now Benson yep. down one and two. You got to change your approach here a little bit. At least get yeah. some contact here. Yeah, he does right back to the pitcher. Clemens fakes the throw to third, then throws the first up, pulled him off the bag, and he's safe. That might be a hit, to be honest with you, because um, the pitcher. Uh, We're going to have an Clemens, argument. Yeah, we will. It, Clemens took a long time getting that ball to first base, and Benson hustled down the line. And, um, I mean, it, 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 that would probably be a hit, I would assume, but they give him an error. Yeah, they gave him an error. I think it's an error only because that was such an easy play. That's true. That's that's a good point. He's going to ask for an appeal. That's yeah, all he come out and ask for an appeal now. Yeah, it's true. This might all be. This all might be for naught here yeah, in a second. Yeah, it's true. Might be null and void here in a second. Yeah, just appeal it. No, they're, they're actually discussing this. They say, all right, you got it. it's 5 1. Do we really want to stick around here as long? We gave him a <laughs> chance here because the base is loaded. Ah. It all depends on if the home plate umpire saw it. it you know, if yeah. he didn't have a good angle. Well, yeah, I mean, if he's, all he has to say is, I didn't see it, so they must be. Oh, he, he did change the call. Good Lord. Good Lord. Come on. 
How do you take that long? It's either you say, yes, I saw it, he's out, or no, he's not out. Not, let's chat for three minutes and decide together the call. It's, it's cut and dry. That's the problem. You can't wait that long and then, and, and then decide, you know, together, well, he, he, must, he must be out. That's just, uh, uh. That's a 1-3 put out. That just drives me nuts because it's either you got it or you don't. It's not a discussion. Yeah. And, and to change a call like that, I, uh, that's, that's the one rule. I, I read football on Saturdays uh, in the fall, and I'll tell you that the main rule we have is you got it or you don't. There's no dilly-dallying. If you don't got it, you can stick with your call, and you back your other guy up. And they did the opposite there. But now it's just two outs and a run, r base runner's on. That's basically what the situation we thought would would be here. That's true. Yep. And Golikowski will foul it out of play. And now bouncer in. Blocked nicely by Dylan. So take the air off the board. And if it's just called a strike on the outside, it's two and two. Gulkowski looking to break a little slump here. He's 0 for 3 tonight, did not have a hit last night. And he'll strike out to end the inning. Yeah, we'll go to the bo top of the ninth with the Blue Sox down and five to one. Everyone's favorite part of the week is Thursday because that means it's Thirsty Thursday. Come out to Kelly Automotive Park each Thursday to support your favorite hometown team, the Butler Blue Sox, and enjoy our special concession prices, including $1 draft beers and 50 cent pops. Tickets start at just $7 and can be purchased online at butlerbluesocks.net and or by phone at 724-256-9994. Let's go Blue Sox. Top of the ninth, and Copeland due up first for the Kings, who lead 5-1. to one. Jack Herzing out to work his third inning of relief. He's had two scoreless so far. A little roller to Webb. He will field it and throw over the head of Herzing. That'll be an error on the first baseman, Webb. And... That was... Uh, that was one where it was like... It, you got to lead the guy. He threw yeah. it by like a, a quarterback throwing the ball behind a receiver. And, and with Webb uh, making his first start at first base, that's uh, that's a tough, uh, that's a real tough play there because he's he's got, as you said, got a hit Herzing on the run. And um, he called that a hit. Yeah, I would say that's probably an error. A good throw probably gets it. Absolutely, it does. And it's not like Webb had to range that far. 
he was basically right in his spot to yeah, field I mean, well, it. Well, regardless, it should be an error. There should be at least one error because the ball went out of play. and Yeah, Ryan runner moved, moved up to second. second. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to leave it as an E3 in my book. But anyway, what I was saying yeah. was with Webb not playing there, that's a tough play for someone who, who may not play first base all right, that much yeah. to make. I mean, you got to – that's probably one of the hardest plays for a first baseman to make. You got to lead uh, the pitcher, and you got to be on the same page with your pitcher there too. So here's the pitch. It's to the backstop, and the runner will move to third. And looking for a little insurance here now. Or the Kings? Yeah, the Kings have done a good job of that so far. They they have tacked on some insurance runs during this game. And Pitch outside, three and one. And Herzing misses ball four. That's one thing he's had a rough time with here is walks. He's Walked a guy every inning so far. He walked three in a row last week against these Kings that all it resulted in uh, a run coming in. But uh, he's settled down in the rest of his innings so far tonight. He hasn't had. He I guess he did give up the one run in the seventh, but um, other than that, he's really. Done all right. He struck out three guys. Strike call here. Yeah, there's some tough luck in that seventh inning too. That that allowed a run to score on the. There's a stolen base that, from our vantage point, looked like the man was out, but uh, didn't get the call. And then the next pitch, uh, sack fly. It's just how it goes. Swing and a miss, and a throw down. And now they're going to come home. Throw to home is wide, and now the runner's going to move up to third. Oh my. So. <laughs> It's definitely a stolen base there, and then that's—I mean—that's a smart play um, by the catcher, uh, Bolton, trying to get an out for one, and then the throw was late. Uh, a good throw at home probably gets probably gets Copeland. I would I would be willing to bet. Yeah, I now the runner moving up to third, and now a strikeout here. Throw down the first on for the first out. I don't know if you call an error on that because the throw well, was wide, and that's why he moved to third. Yeah, I, w I would assume because a good throw probably doesn't move up at all. Yeah, he, yeah, he just gets his stolen base at second and then stays put. So the throw home by, I believe that was Maglione, the second baseman, who threw that back and ended up, uh, I don't <laughs> ended up being wide, and that ends up allowing Burns to move to third. One down, Chrysler fouls it in the GA right beside us. I'll tell you what, there's some, uh, some missiles being thrown at us here tonight. <laughs> I don't know how that one guy didn't move. I don't know. was a liner right back <laughs> at him. He just <laughs> stood there still like a statue. <laughs> no big deal, right? I, I guess so. My goodness. <laughs> Strike call to on Chrysler. Yeah, he that was, <laughs> he that was impressive. He just... <laughs> he didn't, you're right, he didn't, he just, uh, I'm not moving, that ball didn't scare me. <laughs> I would have been, been moving out of the way, I'll uh, tell you that. I've done it before. <laughs> and the 2-2 two -two is a swing and a miss, strike three, back-to-back -back case for Herzing here. King six, Blue Sox one, and at the plate now will be DJ Dillon. This is exactly what we're talking about with with, with uh, Herzing. I mean, he's he uh, you know in this game some tough luck and some errors that have you know allowed the Kings to score some runs they they probably shouldn't have. I mean, the the two errors back to back in this inning uh, really don't help out much. And I mean, he and then he strikes out the next two guys. It's just been uh, that kind of uh, couple weeks uh, for Zach Herzing. Or Jack Herzing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's curveball down low, two and zero. Oh. It's like one batter he faces, he gets a strikeout. Next yeah. batter, it's 3-0. Yeah. It's just. Uh, or then his defense doesn't oh, yeah. It's well, just, it's yeah, just that's, a matter. That's true, too. Pitch outside again. 
And just like I said, he's got to strike out. Now he's got a 3-0 count. It's just like it just bounce back and forth. Uh, need, need a little bit more consistency. You need, need to trust the stuff. He's got a good fastball on the left side. And he misses it. No, called strike. Dylan threw his bat heading down the first. He apologizes to the umpire. You know, sometimes late strike call, you will throw that. Yeah, the umpire's kind of, we talked about this in the last time I was on with you, that you know, umpires don't like that sort of thing. They don't like to be um, you know, shown up, so to speak. I mean, Dylan didn't do anything out of the ordinary, but um, you know, they kind of wait to see your reaction as a hitter. Yeah, there's a walk. So this inning is gone. E3, walk, strikeout, strikeout, walk. It's just yeah, and then an E6 that allowed the ru that runner to score. Uh, Copeland score an E6 oh. um, that allowed him to score, and then the runner to move up as well. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know. <laughs> this has been a rough, uh, rough sequence here in this inning. And here's Jet Swetland, who has been on base all four times tonight. A couple of walks and a couple of singles. And swing and a miss here. Yeah, Swetland, um, he's... As you mentioned, last year cooled off, but he's trying to heat himself back up in the beginning of this year. And as you said, the beginning of last year, he was on fire. I remember that. And now, uh, you know, his on-base percentage is uh, a 1,000. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then uh, he tried to hold his swing up there, but couldn't do so. So right back, uh, hurting right back to a 1-2, trying to finish off Swetland and get this inning over. Runner takes off, swing and a miss, strike three. Three strikeouts in the inning, but the things that happened in between – are the reason why the Kings get a run on, uh, well, they didn't get a hit. They get an error, two errors, and uh, leave two. Well, bottom half of the ninth coming up. Blue Sox are down six to one. All right, back here we got a pitching change for the Kings. Uh, John Medich, number 31 for the, actually the catcher, but he has also pitched some. Uh, Swickley native will come in to try to close things down. Uh, he's not in a safe situation because it's six to one in favor of the Kings. Ray Gonzalez is one, or, or no, he's 0 for two, but he did draw a walk. One of just 
seven base runners so far for the Blue Sox tonight. Uh, pitch misses away. And if this score holds, both of these teams will leave here tonight four and four. West Virginia, er, West Virginia goes to Champion City for two, so they're home for uh, a couple of games. And then Butler's going out to Lafayette tomorrow. Pitch misses inside. It'll be 3-0 and to Gonzalez here. Yeah, and Butler's going to have to put some good at-bats together, as we've said, uh, in this uh, ninth inning. Going to have to score five runs to keep it going. Well, that's a good start, a walk. Second time tonight, Ray Gonzalez has worked now his self on base. Christian Looks like uh, Chillicothe in a little bit of trouble of ending their long winning streak. Uh, they're down 4 1 to West Virginia tonight, looking for their second win of the summer. Kokomo 7, Lafayette 4 in the bottom of the seventh. And here's Christian Webb. Called strike here. Terre Haute four, Springfield one in the bottom of the seventh. They also have a long winning streak going. They start, uh, they've won more, actually more games than anybody else in a row in the league at uh, six. After dropping their opening day game, curveball is framed up, but called a ball. Yeah, it was a nasty curveball there uh, by the catcher pitcher, yeah. Sean Medich. We have one of those too, Ray Gonzalez. That's true, yeah, that's a good point. I forgot all about that. We talked about that before the game started today, and how did I forget? One one bluff steal, and Webb fouls it out of the stadium on the left side, down into the parking lot. And one two is. Inside, nice job of keeping that one in front of him by Dylan. Had a lot of sink to it. Yeah, and nasty. Uh, I mean, he's just throwing his fa I think that was a fastball there, two seam or a sinker of some yeah. sort. That was just nasty. Oh, uh, Webb chops one off the plate to stay alive. Murphy on deck. Uh, hypothetical for you. Now, say you get into a situation where you do get the tying run to the plate. Uh, I'm guessing uh, you, you would hit Ferguson. Yeah, yeah, not a doubt about it. I would put Ferguson in it if the if the uh, tying run were to come to the plate. Uh, you, that's going to be your guy. I mean, with one swing of the bat, could uh, tie the ball game for you, obviously. Two two, That's line drive to center. That'll get down for a base hit. Oh, oh and it almost got by Chrysler. It does get away enough that it'll allow Gonzalez to move to third. He uh, kind of made a kick save out there to keep that thing from racing right by him. But the bubble out there puts runners on the corners with just well, actually nobody out. I don't know. I don't know what that ball hit. It was just a line drive in the center fielder Chrysler. I mean, he came right in on it like he was supposed to do, pulled up, let it hop, and I mean, I don't know what it hit, but it kicked way to the right. I mean, if that ball, might have if hit he yeah, if he doesn't get a piece of that, that thing might roll to the wall. Yeah, they might have hit a sprinkler head or something out there, you never know. There's a couple of them out there. Hitch misses away to Murphy, he doubled his last time up, could use that here. Yeah, double would uh, put, you know, put Webb at third at least. And now he's head 2-0. Oh. We saw this last night, though. Kings had a, a lead in hand, and then the, the Blue Sox put together a, a decent ninth, got a run across, and threatened to get the tying run to the plate. Or actually did actually got the go-ahead run to the, to the plate, but uh, ended up getting the final out to get out of it. 2-1 the count on...
Murphy. Here's the pitch, and it is just a little bit outside. That that was wow. a good frame job by Dylan, but he doesn't get the call. Yeah, yeah there's been a couple uh, pitches that have been real close for, for Medich and just hasn't gotten the call. And, I mean, it's kind of interesting. You normally wouldn't expect the, the strike zone to shrink a little bit, but it seems like it's done that here in the ninth. And now 3-1 is up high. Ball four, bases loaded, nobody out. Oh, you're closer to bringing the tying run up. That's for sure. We're getting there. We're down yeah. five. We get a run in, then the tying run is at the plate. That's right. As long as everybody's still on base, and that's a good point. Have to be loaded. That's a good point. Time called. Here comes Rick White out. Now they're going to looks like get somebody hot out in the bullpen. You know, all you can do in these situations, if you are uh, if you're the team that's down, is just try to put a, uh, every at bat together uh, as best as you can and, and um, see as many pitches as you can. And so far. Uh, they've done that. I mean, Ray Gonzalez with a walk, uh, and then Webb with the single, and, and now Murphy with a walk. I mean, it's uh, it could just pop out a dugout. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting, and obviously, like we said, if that if that run scores, I mean, I'm bringing Ferguson up. You know, actually, maybe I wouldn't bring him up until. Well, then again, the situation would have to be right. But if he represents the winning run. Well, depending on the situation, if there's two yeah. outs, he's the guy I'm putting up there. But. Yeah, Maglione would he's be scheduled to hit next, and then after that's Merconja. So it would be interesting. I need to see Ferguson peek out of the dugout, yeah, take a couple a hacks, bit, yeah. head back in. Bolton's ready to go. He takes a called strike. Here's the 0-1, pop foul, and out of the stadium. And now down 0-2, Bolton has got to try to put something together here. Got to see a couple pitches and maybe uh, put a ball in play that can score a run. You don't want a double play ball here. We've, we've had that, we've had this situation before, bases loaded, nobody out. Nice curveball, but no bite from Bolton, we got uh, coming in, into tonight. Managed two appearances, one only one in the third innings, three strikeouts, and three hits allowed. Six point seven five ERA, but that's pretty much irrelevant. And uh, so, I don't know. He's he's in the soup here, but he's, yeah, bouncer blocked by Dylan Gonzalez. No thoughts of coming home, and rightly so. You don't yeah. want to make the first <laughs> down at home. No, no, no. no that w that's a big no-no. I mean, that's especially when you're down five. You yeah. definitely don't want to do that. Uh, now uh, Bolton's worked his count even. Uh, he's getting himself back into the at-bat, and obviously now he's back in it with the count being even. Just got to try to fight anything tough off and put something in play. 2-2. Two -two. Fastball right there for called strike three. He didn't like it, but I, I thought that was pretty much something you can't take care. No, yeah, I, that's not a pitch you can you can take, that's for sure. So Maglione, with the bases loaded here, will step in. One down. He's hit the ball, ball hard twice tonight, so if he can find a gap here, make it interesting. Pitch low. Now your hand's almost forced if uh, if, if, if Maglione gets on, you, you, you have to. Right. You have to put Ferguson out there, which is why I'm surprised he's not swinging the bat right now. He might be back below the dugout, obviously, but. Pitch inside, 2-0. So now Maglione's gonna be sitting dead red here. Yeah, uh, you're looking for a fastball. In your spot here, 2-0, and if it's if it's anything other than that, you don't take a hack at it. You, I mean, and it's got to be something you can drive and hit well. Pitch outside, 3-0. And, and if 
if I'm uh, Maglione here, I am taking until I get a strike. And <laughs> even if that means yeah. waiting until it's a full count and take, you, you, you do not swing at anything here that is remotely. I mean, I'm, this is a no swing. No, I would I would agree with you. He's got he's got to prove to you that he could throw a strike. Yeah, he doesn't. Ball four. <laughs> RBI walk. And I don't know how much longer this is going to continue for uh, Mr. Medich. But uh, already one guy warming in the bullpen for the Kings. So RBI walk for Maglione makes it six to two. Well, I suppose we are both wrong here. They're going to stick with. No, nope, they're going to. They're going to. Merkonj. Yeah, they're going to go get the ball off of. Medich and we'll have a new pitcher. Actually, looks like Marchant coming in uh, closer. And with one out and the base is loaded, I almost think that this would be a. Oh, see, now Ferguson is out of dugout again, swinging around. Yeah, and I'm I, I'm shocked to be completely honest with you that he isn't uh, in the box right now because. Um, but then again, they might be thinking, like I was, okay, if, if, if Merkonja gets on, uh, then Ferguson represents the winning run. And then maybe you put him in in that situation. Who knows? Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. There's another batter swinging around. I can't make out the number, though. I think that's Benson. Yeah. That's yeah, it is Benson. Benson. Yep. Okay, so let's... All right, so let's see what we got here with Marchant. He's a 6'5", junior from Grandview University, played for the Kings last summer, and the Blue Sox hit him around. Yeah, it, it, is, yeah. it is uh, one, ap one appearance ag against them. He's uh, allowed three runs in two-thirds of an inning, yeah, one walk, two strikeouts. And then in his second appearance, he pitched a clean inning against Springfield. One, uh, one walk and two strikeouts. Yeah, and this will be interesting here because, as, as you mentioned, Butler, they hit Mar Marchant around the last time they faced him, and uh, that's got to bring some confidence to you, obviously. I mean, the base is loaded with one out. Uh, you're down four. Um, you know, this is a guy you've seen before, so you just got to try to put something together here and, and see if Merkonja can get on. Then we'll see what, uh, what they decide to do with, with the uh, batting situation with Ferguson. Well, here we go. Merkonja takes inside. Carew on deck. Ferguson tempting us with his <laughs> practice swing, but he has not come <laughs> out yet. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I mean, almost shocking. I think if they get another run here, he's going to have to hit. Well, I, I think, too, if they get an out here, they would have to uh, That's in. true, too. Yeah, you're right. Regardless, yeah. Uh, Really, that's the only two options here. Ball lined into center field. That's going to hold up long enough for Chrysler to make the catch. Tagging and coming in to score is Webb. It's now a 6-3 to three ball game. And now you got to think Ferguson's going to be coming I, I in. I would assume. Yep, looks like Carew's going to hit. Oh, maybe not. Well, looks like he's going to stick with Carew here and, and um, give Ferguson the day off, even though he's just a decoy. We're down to the final out here. Two runners on, and Carew represents the tying run. The pitch inside from Marshan. Ball misses away. Part of what could be uh, hamstringing us is we really don't have any position players. Exactly, that's true. That might be, yeah, maybe waiting for a position that he can play possibly. It'd be Webb way back at, <laughs> but or maybe third even. I mean, if you get yeah, to that yeah. situation for. Lukowski maybe if if you get that far. I mean we're still two peep two batters away from that. 
two one is outside. So they, maybe they just want to get to a situation where he can win the game. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what they're shot. waiting for. What the heck? I don't know. But Carew's ahead three and one here. Marchand has walked two on the season. Here's the pitch. It's out. Never mind. Looked outside. Called a strike. And it's full. Well, the runners will be moving with the pitch now. Yeah. So uh, base hit. And, uh, will definitely score one. A ball in the gap. Possibly could score two. Here we go again. Carew, ground ball right back to Marshant. Nah, he should have been on first because that was ball four, but that'll end the game. And the Blue Sox, uh, it's the same thing last night. A case of too little, too late. Yeah, an effort, a uh, great effort uh, on the comeback there. They scored two in the ninth, just couldn't get close enough. And uh, they run in some bad luck there, po possibly a ball four that, that uh, would have loaded the base with two outs. But, uh, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles, and that's the way it goes. And... Champion City just seems to have Butler's number uh, so far this year. <laughs> yeah, they really do. And so James Wright is really a story now. He's six innings, well, just one hit, took a no-hitter into the fifth, fifth of minimum through five innings, yeah. and uh, allowed just one walk and six strikeouts. And he is the winning pitcher tonight for the Kings. Austin Marchand. I don't know if that will be considered a safe situation or not. I believe it will because yeah. the tying run was came to the or winning one came to the place. Yeah. No tying. It was tie, yeah, tying. You're right. Yeah. So he goes two thirds of an inning, walks one. No, he didn't walk anybody. He he just got the sacrifice fly in the yep. the one three. So that's all for him. Medich, who come in before him, allowed two runs on one hit and three walks. No and one strikeout. That was a bolt. Okay, so final score tonight, 6-3 in favor of the champion City Kings. They improved to 4-4 four four on the season while the Blue Sox fall to 4-4. Four and four. And Proved a 4-0 on the season against Butler. Yeah, just uh, crazy. I mean, Champion City, uh, it, like they say, some teams just have your number sometimes, and that's exactly what's happened uh, so far this year with Champion City and Butler, and Butler um, now falls to 500 and uh, got a road trip coming up that's big for them, so uh, hopefully they can get past this. They don't, they don't play Champion City for a while, so I suppose that's a good thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> now you can go on the road and face someone else. Yeah, so uh, quick recap. Uh, the first run come in on a error by Gulikowski at third. Allowed Dylan to score from first. A wide throw went all the way to the corner. That made it one nothing. And then the Kings broke it open in the sixth with three runs. Uh, a couple of walks and then a two RBI double by McLaughlin that scored Dylan and Swetland. And then an RBI ground out by Bafia made it uh, 4 nothing, and they got another run in the 7th on uh, a leadoff block then a sacrifice fly by West an error, a two base error by Webb to start the ninth, allowed another run to come in, Blue Sox runs tonight uh, they got a hit by pitch by Bolton, on Bolton, then he came around to score uh, eventually after a double play with the bases loaded by Ben Carew and the two runs here in the ninth, the walk and a single by Gonzalez and Webb. Uh, eventually, both of them scored. An RBI walk by Maglione drove in Gonzalez, and, or yeah, Gonzalez, and then Webb was uh, scored on a sacrifice fly to center field by Stefan Merconja. So that's final nights, six three. I said four and four both ways here. And now six days on the road and seven in seven days because of the off day on Monday, but you got Lafayette, Danville, and West Virginia coming up. Uh, Kellen, uh, this will be the last time we get to hang I out know, for a little yeah, while. For almost, a, well, it will be a week, a full week. Yes. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Big gap, and hopefully uh, hopefully the boys can go out there and, and get, get some Ws, and uh, like I said, it's good to not play Champion City, <laughs> at least for the time being, 
and see uh, see where you come out uh, after the road trip. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So head to Lafayette tomorrow. Early morning bus ride, and uh, start the roadie. So we'll, we'll uh, sign off from here. I appreciate everybody listening. I'm Jaron Steele, joined tonight by my color man who did a good job, Kellen Gursky, and for my producer, Joel Norman, in the studio. I'm Jaron Steele. Final score, 6-3, Champion City. They are now 4-4, four four, so are the Blue Sox. Have a great night. We'll talk to you next Thursday when Kokomo comes to town, and uh, we'll hook you up with the games on the road as well as much as we can. So thanks for listening, and have a great night.